Hello and welcome to the channel. Welcome to an FM 2022 experiment video here. For today's video, I have gone through every team in the Premier League and then I have randomised them all. I've randomised every club's players as well as their managers. And today we're going to simulate a season and see how these randomised Premier League teams get on. We're here in the season preview section. As you can see, it looks very different to how the season preview section usually does. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through each of the teams here, starting from 20th to 1st, have a look at who their manager is, and have a look at their dream 11. First of all, we have in 20th place, 1,000 to 1, very, very clearly favourites for the bottom place, Southampton. Southampton, managed by Eddie Howe, looks like they're going to be playing that 4-4-2, centre back pairing of Diaz and Tarkovsky, you've got Silver and Barnes on the wings, playing the ball into that Timu Puki, Timo Werner strike forced. Very clear favourites to finish bottom, but... Can Eddie Howe get them firing? Pukki and Werner up top could get the goals. Have to find out how he gets on. Whilst 19th place predicted to be Leeds with Steven Gerrard in charge. Playing a 4-3-3. Uh, midfield of Ward-Prowse, Diallo and Noble. Harrison and Zaha on the wings playing the ball to Havertz up top. Keeper in goal. Gerrard in the Premier League here looking to keep Leeds United up much like Bielsa did. Whilst the third team predicted for relegation, Crystal Palace managed by Jurgen Klopp. Playing that 4-3-3 as well, Varane and Lascelle centre-back pairing with Digne at left-back, Dallas at right-back. He's Jurgen Klopp still got Jordan Henderson with Ndombele and Allen in the field. And then Martinelli and Rashika on the wings with Charleston up top. Not a bad team for Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp, great manager. If anyone can keep this team up, you'd have to think it was him. While 17th place is predicted to be Norwich, managed by David Moyes. Looks like they're going to be playing a 4-2-3-1 with Tierney and Dalla at full-backs. Pickford in goal. Odgaard and Grealish in the midfield. And uh, then you've got Pulisic, Joel Linton and Mares just behind Connolly up top. Not a bad team by any stretch of the imagination. Norwich predicted to be down the bottom of the table, but not quite relegated. We'll have to see if Moyes can manage to keep Norwich up, though. Everton predicted for 16th with Mikel Arteta at the club. Mikel Arteta deciding instead of managing former club Arsenal, he'd manage former club Everton instead, which really does make more sense if we're all honest. Uh, Dubravka in goal. Defence with uh, Thomas, Cody, Conter and Lamperty, Ducore and Thiago in midfield. And then Smith Rowe, Deli Alley and Mark Albright and all behind Raul, Jimenez, Mikel Arteta. Going to be looking to do well with Everton here. Everton going for the young, inexperienced Arteta, but we'll see how he gets on. Not a bad team for Arteta. Whilst 15th place West Ham, we managed by former Premier League winning manager Claudio Ranieri playing that 4-4-2. Fabianski. Even in the randomizer remaining at West Ham. Defence of Alonso, Stones, Matip and Semedo. Midfield of St. Maxime, Douglas Louise, Ruben Nevers and Fraser. And then Pats and Daka and Gabriel Jesus up front. Very pacey front two there. And also with St. Maxime going down that left hand side. The Stones and Matip a strong centre back pairing. West Ham decent team here. Ranieri in charge. Predicted to come 15th. Could push up further up. Maybe mid table. We'll have to wait and see. Whilst Leicester City, the man Claudio Ranieri won the Premier League win, of course, and managed by Ralph Hasenhutl, also employing a 4-4-2. Hugo Lloris in goal, Bertrand, Laporte, Lindelof and Walker-Peters at the defence. Ahead of them, you've got Visser, Matic, Tielemans and Armstrong, and then Anthony Gordon and Chris Watt up top. Defensively, very sound for Ralph Hasenhutl's Everton. Maybe going forward, not the strongest, but... Could still manage to get them firing. We'd have to we have to wait and see and find out how that gets on. Last predicted come 13th is Burnley, managed by Dean Smith. A very boring choice, if we're honest. Deciding to stay with the same kind of colour palette as Aston Villa. Uh, playing a 4-3-3 as predicted. Emiliano Martinez in goal, joining him from Aston Villa. Defence of Perud, Declan Rice, Eric Dyer and Azpilicueta. And then midfield three of Gundogan, Hoiberg and Hayden. And then Pedro Neto and Lucas Moura on the wings. Playing to Lukaku up top. Dean Smith's Burnley, Deece, a good team here, you have to say. Declan Rice and Eric Dyer, both more naturally CDMs than centre-backs, but can do the job there. Azpilicueta, very good. Gundogan, good playmaker. Get the ball to Mora and Neto. Get the ball into Lukaku. Lukaku's so dangerous, so lethal. Could very well single-handedly drag Burnley up this table. Whilst Brentford, also 100-1 to odds. Predicted to come 12th, just above Burnley, though. With Brendan Rodgers and Stars playing a 4-2-3-1. With a team that I personally think 
predicted way too low. This team, in my opinion, very strong. Rogers a good manager. The team, Schmeichel, Chilwell, Silva, Maguire, Reese James, James Madison, N'Golo Kante, Brian Gill, Phil Foden, Fran Torres, and Danny Welbeck. Now, maybe you say Danny Welbeck, not going to get you many goals. But behind him, with Foden and Torres, Madison going forward, you're going to get goals. And defensively, Chilwell, Thiago Silva, Harry Maguire, Reese James, Schmeichel in goal, Kante, defensively so sound. I think 12th place prediction for this Brentford team, you know, I think that's very low. But we'll see how they go. And maybe that's right. Maybe Brentford won't have it in them, but I think they'll do better than that. Whilst rounding off the bottom half of the table, you have Brighton managed by Pep Guardiola. Pep Guardiola's Brighton and Jurgen Klopp's Crystal Palace. The two bitter rivals managed by Guardiola and Klopp had to be, I guess. Pep Guardiola's 4-3-3 with Brighton. Looking like this, you got Begovic in goal, Cancelo, Chalaba, Bednarek, and Fabinho as your back four. Kovacic, La Celso, and Calvin Phillips in the midfield. And then you've got Roberto Firmino and Raheem Sterling on the wings. Calvert Lewin up top. A good team for Brighton there. And with Pep Guardiola in charge as well, Brighton could end up doing very well in this season. Uh, whilst going into the top of our table, Aston Villa predicted to come 10th, managed by Graham Potter, doing such a good job with Brighton in real life. Looks like he's going to be employing a 5-2-2-1, I'll say. Uh, Forster in goal. Back three of Bailly, Gabriel and Romero. Wingbacks, Target and Walker. Onyeka and Chamberlain in the midfield. And then Sun and Ben Rama just behind the main man himself, Cristiano Ronaldo, playing at Aston Villa in this experiment. He was randomised there. How will he get on Aston Villa? I mean, looking at Aston Villa's team, it's not just Ronaldo. Sun behind him. Ben Rama good as well. And defense, Kyle Walker and Target going down on wings, getting the balls in. Defensively, maybe not the strongest, but Ronaldo, much like Lukaku, could single-handedly drag Aston Villa's, Graham Potter's Aston Villa, right to the top of the table. We'll have to wait and find out, though. Predict to come above them. First of all, you have Watford at 25-1. to 1. Predict to come ninth. Managed by Bruno Lag, Also employing a five at the back, like Aston Villa. Uh, but this time, a 5-2-2-1 two, two, with wingers instead of cams. Raya in goal, Christensen, Dendonka and Mina as centre-halves, Cucurella and Emerson Royal as your wing-backs, McTominay and Lallana in centre-mid, Mane and Nketiah on the wings, Danny Ings up top. A good team, not including that 11, but as you can see here, Virgil van Dijk at Watford. God knows why he's not in that 11, because uh, he's currently got a little bit of an injury. He'll be back though, and you have to think he'll be in that 11. And with Virgil van Dijk and Christensen providing solidity at the back and then I mean just Sadio Mane himself going forward you could say but Danny Ings very good as well Watford you can see why they're predicted to come so high could do very well this season also having on to 25 to 1 predicted to come 8th though is Arsenal managed by Patrick Vieira club legend Patrick Vieira was randomised to go to Arsenal I mean it just ha is these things just happen I guess destiny or fate or whatever it is a 4-3-3 for him Edison in goal Peters, Cresswell, Ogbonna and Rudiger at the back. Jorginho, Sumer, Moutinho in the midfield. And Di Gineppo and Jota on the wings playing the Rodrigo. A decent team with some decent players. Patrick Vieira maybe in a little inexperienced. We'll have to see how he gets on. Arsenal, I think, I personally think maybe the 8th place prediction. A bit generous for this team. But it's not a bad team by any stretch of imaginations. But I feel like maybe there are stronger ones. But we'll have to wait and see. Predicted to come 8th. We'll find out how they get on and predict to come 7th in that Europa Conference League spot is Tottenham, managed by Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel leaving Chelsea for Tottenham, which really hurt to have to edit, but it happens. Uh, Tuchel's lovely little 5 2, two one, with Jose Sarr in goal, back three of Zuma, Pablo Mari and Veltman, Robertson and Coleman as wing-backs, Zinchenko and Suchek in the midfield, and then Fornells and Iheanacho just behind Lacazette. Good team with some good players and with Thomas Tuchel in charge, Tottenham could end up doing very well. Up to sixth place in a Europa League spot is Manchester City, managed by Brentford manager Thomas Frank. The Dane looks to be playing a 5-3-2 with Man City. De Gea in gold. De Gea leaving United for City. Howley Fair on the sky blue side of Manchester. Back three of Cooper, Johansson and me. Cornet and Mankio as the wing-backs, and Brownhill, Party and Rodri in the midfield, and Tony and Origi up top. A decent team for Thomas Frank. How will he get on in charge of Manchester City? Predicted to come sixth. 
Can he push higher? Man City, of course, they want Champions League football. They want titles. Can Thomas Frank deliver? We'll have to wait and find out. And produce come fifth, just outside of the top four, is Liverpool, managed by Ralph Rangnick. Ralph Rangnick arriving at Man United and immediately leaving to go to bitter rivals Liverpool, where he'll be employing that 4-4-2. Ariola in goal, back four of Shaw, Dunk, Bolly and Shackleton. A midfield four of Ashley Young, Alzati, Fred and Somerville, and then Trossard and Watkins up top. Decent team, also available, Trent Alexander-Arnold, randomised to Liverpool's kids stayed right where he was a decent team taking the Man United a very Manchester United left side with Luke Shaw and Ashley Young Ralph Rangnick's tactical ability will he be able to get the best out of these players and push Liverpool up predicted to come fifth place will he do so we'll have to wait and find out predicted to come fourth in a Champions League spot is Chelsea managed once again by Antonio Conte, Antonio Conte employing a 5-3-2, Leno in goal, back three of Salisu, Craig Dawson and Sheik Koyate, wing backs you got Ait Nori and Tommy Yasu, midfield three of Willock, Ziek and Saul, and then Neil Lumpe and Jamie Vardy up top, a strong little team for Chelsea, and Antonio Conte back in charge, last time he took charge first season, won the Premier League, will he do it again, we'll have to wait and find out, uh, but into the Top three teams here. First of all, third place. Predicted to come third place. Wolves. Wolves managed by Rafa Benitez. And a very strong team for Wolves here. 4 2 3 1 formation. Allison in goal. Nuno Tavares. Nathan Aki. Johnny Evans. And Ainsley Maitland Niles as your back four. Suzoko and Ndidi in the midfield. And then Saka, Mount, and Mbwemo. Just behind Huang He Chan. Strong team for Wolves as well as a strong manager in Rafa Benitez, predicted to come third. How will they get on this season? It'll be interesting to see Wolves, one of the standouts for a big change in position to how they're normally predicted to finish the season. So we'll have to see how Rafa manages there. And then in second, the other big standout for, for changes in predictions for where they're meant to finish the season. At 3-1 to one to win the title, Newcastle United managed by Sean Dice. Yep. The Saudis got in charge. They got all their money into the club. And they said the man we need is Sean Dyche. And that is lovely to me. And Sean Dyche with a great team here. A 4-4-2 because of course. Guayata in goal. Tellez, Soyuncu, Kabak and Gomez as your back four. Sancho, Pogba, Fernandez, and Bergvine as your midfield four. And then Adams and Rashford up top. A lot of United, man United players you have to say there. Uh, Pogba and Fernandez both playing that Sean Dyche football to Marcus Rashford up top. Sancho and Bergwijn down the wings. Gomez in defence. It is beautiful. I cannot wait to see how Sean Dyche's Saudi billionaire Newcastle get on. But they're not predicted to come first. The team predicted to come first is Manchester United. 9-5 to five odds on. Clear favourites to win the league. Managed by Marcello Bielsa. Marcelo Bielsa leaving leads for their big rivals, Man United. And it looks like he may just deliver Man U that Premier League title they've been waiting a while for. And you can kind of see why they're clear favourites. Gallini in goal. Junior Firpo, Ben White, Diego Lorente and Matt Doherty in defence. Inabi Chieta, Pierre-Lise Melou and Kevin De Bruyne in midfield. And Kevin De Bruyne is going to be playing balls to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Mo Salah and Harry Kane. What a front four that is. Kevin De Bruyne, the amount of assists he'd probably be able to get if he was playing balls to Kane, or Aubameyang and Salah, it doesn't bear thinking about. He'll get the chance. We'll see how he gets on there. United, if we're being honest, should win the league. Maybe you could say not the strongest defence, but I think employing the very clear tactics of we'll just score more goals than you with this team could work out wonderfully for them. That is the league prediction uh, I will also just go through the teams. I'll click on Arsenal and scroll through them all. And you can have a look at the teams. Maybe I'll point out any big changes I see. Just have a scroll. Arsenal, two very good goalkeepers in Nick Pope and in Edison. Aston Villa. There is their team. Uh, I mean, attackingly, it is very strong. Greenwood, Ronaldo, Youngwin Sun. Maybe defensively, not as strong, but just give it to Ronaldo. Don't have to worry about much else. Brentford, I do, once again, I think we'll do really well this season. If anything, just because Reese James and Ben Chilwell are very good at football. Phil Foden also, as well as James Madison. 
Maybe they don't have that clear out-and-out striking goal scorer, but a good team nonetheless for Brentford. Brighton and Hove Albion, managed by Pep Guardiola, of course. They're very good players, especially attacking-wise. You know, hudson Adore, Sterling, Pepe Firmino, Calvert-Lewin could end up doing very well this season. And Burnley, Burnley, decent team. I mean, no standouts that haven't been mentioned already. Could do quite well. Also, Antonio Conte's Chelsea, ignore Saul. I'll have to, I'll, 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 I'll get rid of Saul, don't worry. Ignore Saul. Uh, Antonio Conte's Chelsea, pretty decent as well. Maybe defensively not as solid, but good at forward, good attacking options. Should do all right this season. Crystal Palace, ignore Mateta, I will delete him as well. Uh, Aston Villa's team, strong defence for Ran, Gooey, Lascelles, good defensive options. Everton, good team, no real standout names going on here, but a good team nonetheless for the Toffees. Whilst Leeds United also, uh, two good goalkeeping options in Ramsdale and Kiefer, decent little defence. Attacking wise, Callum Wilson. Always good in FM. Cavani can get him firing. Benteke, Havertz. Good attacking options in the best 11 they predicted. Havertz over all three of the actual strikers. That's, it'll be interesting how they actually line up. Whilst Leicester City. No real standout names again. Adrian, the backup to Allison. Now the backup to Hugo Lloris. Can't catch a break. Gani. Oh, de defensively pretty good. Laporte, Lindelof, Livramento. Good options available there. Uh, Liverpool. Decent team. Once again, though, no real standouts, I'd say. You know, striking options wise, Bamford, Watkins, and Trossard. Probably, they probably go Bamford over Watkins, I think. Uh, whilst at Manchester City, I mean, De Gea in goal is the most standout thing here, still, in my opinion. Ivan Tovey up top as well should be all right, playing for a big team. A big moment for Tony. Manchester United. Good little defence, you know, Ben White, Lorente, Firpo, Doherty, Mitchell, good options available for them there. But, I mean, the standout is Kevin De Bruyne playing balls to Kane, Aubameyang and Salah. United really should win the league, shouldn't they? If they don't, something has gone very wrong for them. Uh, over at Newcastle, it's pretty good. I mean, Joe Gomez, Max Ahrens, Kabak, Soyuncu, defensively very strong. And then you've got Fernandez, Sanchez, Bergwijn, Pogba, Rashford. Newcastle predicted to come second for a reason. Uh, Norwich City, Tim Krull remains, but probably will not be first choice with Pickford available as well in the net. Uh, Odgaard, Mares, Grealish, Pulisic. A lot of good options there for Norwich. They could do all right attacking-wise. Could get quite a few goals with that forward unit. Uh, and Southampton. God, this is small. Sometimes I just shoved a bunch of their players in the under-23 for some reason. But still, they'll call them up when needed. Uh, Tarkovsky, Konate, Diaz. Good little defences options. they got Fabian Delph, Mr. Utility Man himself. Bernardo Silva, Timo Werner, Puki. Attacking-wise, some good options as well. Southampton, decent squad. Whilst over at Tottenham, Ben Foster and Jose Sar maybe not the best goalkeeping options to have. Uh, and defensively in front of them, though, you've got Zuma, Kurt Zuma, uh, Coleman, Amati, Robertson, Zinchenko, Mari, Veltman. Decent defence to have. Midfield-wise, you've got Conor Gallagher, the engine, Gomez, Suchek, Lukman, Lanzini, Rafinha. Up top, Broja, Lacadio, and Lacazette. Tottenham could cause some problems in the league with this team. Whilst over in Watford, already got their 11 ready, as you can see. Van Dyke, I mean, it's a very good defender to have, isn't it? Virgil Van Dyke, Andreas Christensen, and then Donka options as well as Yerry Mina. Going forward, John McGinn, Lalana, Hendrick, Grob, Armstrong, and Ketia, Saar, Mane, Danny Ings, good attacking options as well. Watford could do quite well. Mane and Van Dyke, the Liverpool boys, could drag them up the table themselves defensively and attackively. Uh, West Ham, they'd pro they're probably just going to keep Fabianski in gold like real life, you know, fair enough. Uh, defence, John Stones, Wambasaka, Samido, good choices. Midfield, St. Maxime, Dragon Forward, Jesus, Jao Pedro, and Pats and Dakar, all with the pace as well. Could catch some slower, older defences on the attack and counter quite easily. And finally, Wolves, Allison and Edward Mendy, both in goal. 
Who will be number one? It will be interesting to see. Uh, Wolves absolutely spoiled for goalkeepers there. Uh, lost the rest of their team. Pretty decent. You know, Saka, Suzuko, Gilmore, Mount, Huang Hee Chan, Anthony Martial, Aki, Tavares, Kufal, Sanchez, Evans. It's a decent team for Wolves as well. It'll be interesting to see how that everyone gets on in this randomised Premier League. A lot has changed. A lot is different. Man United really, really should dominate and win the title. If they don't, then God knows what's gone wrong in Manchester. But without further ado, let's simulate forward the season and see how this randomised Premier League unfolds. And here we are, May of 2022. The season has finished and it is Newcastle who have won the league. Sean Dyche and the Saudi billionaires have 4-4-2'd their way to glory. In a record equaling lowest points total to win the league, 75 points. And yet, they still finished 10 points clear of second. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what that says about the quality of the teams. Uh, to play stats-wise, Marcus Rashford, top scorer from Newcastle. Let's just have a look at Newcastle. Sean Dyche, the manager, of course. Uh, best eleven. Zawi's been setting up Guetta in goal. Pereira, Soyuncu, Gomez and Tellez are the back four. Pretty decent back four. Uh, but when, it's, it's when you get even further forward, it gets better. And maybe you can see why they won the league. But when the uh, Sancho, Fernandez, and Pogba in your midfield four. And Rashford and Che Adams up top. I mean, as a 4-4-2, this is very, very good, isn't it? I mean, looking at the stats-wise, 28 goals for Rashford. 16 Adams, 11 for Fernandez. I mean... It's, it is a very good team. Rashford with 26 goals. The assists coming primarily from that midfield four. Nine for Buendia, 10 for Sancho and Pogba, 11 for Fernandez. It, it, it's just gone very well for Newcastle. Sean Dyche doing exceptional there, winning them the league with 75 points. With Brighton coming second, Pep Guardiola doing very well with Brighton to get them second. I mean, I can't remember where they were predicted to finish. Uh... They were predicted to come 16th, so I mean, Pep Guardiola's done exceptional there, hasn't he? That's 11, 4-3-3. Uh, Begovic, Cancelo, Bednarak, Chalaba, Byrne is your back, is your defensive. And then Fabinho, Kovacic, Phillips is, as your midfield three is, is a very solid midfield three. And then furthest forward, hudson Odoi and Sterling playing balls into Firmino. Firmino on 18 goals, 12 for Sterling, 9 for hudson Odoi. Goals more shared out here. Then in that Newcastle side where Rashford ran away as the top scorer. The assist pretty shared out as well between that front three. That front three really carrying this team forward. Uh, Calvin Phillips though, getting six goals as well. Good for him. He's clearly had a good season as well. As Brighton finish in second place. I mean, they predicted to come 16th like I showed you. And so second place, really, really good. A biggest shock, The biggest shock around here, I would say, in my opinion is Manchester United, finishing 7th. They were predicted to win the league. I mean, with the squad they had, with, with Bielsa in charge, you thought they would have, but they finished 7th place, 59 points, 16 points off top spot Newcastle. I don't know what's gone wrong here. I mean, what, let's have a look at the 11 he's been playing first. Galini, Delphati, Anderson, Lorente, Furpo is your defence. I mean, it's not the best defence. Attack Going forward... This team, as, as I was about to say, very strong. I mean, Ben White is a CDM here instead of a centre-back. I mean, even, you know, he's probably staying further back, so it's more like a back five, and they obviously conceded a lot to finish seventh. But Kieta and De Bruyne are as a midfield too. Pretty, pretty good. Especially De Bruyne playing balls forward to your front three of Salah, Aubameyang, and Kane. But Salah with 16 goals, Kane with 23 goals, Trincao got 10 goals. And yet United seem to have really struggled this season. I mean, just looking at the league, assists-wise, De Bruyne got eight, only got eight assists, six for Harry Kane, three for Kieta, Bemiang and MacArthur. Not scoring many goals. I mean, I just let's have a look. How many goals did they actually score in the league? They only scored 50. I mean, I, I assume the problem is more so with creating chances than scoring them, because if you're playing balls to Salah, Kane, or Bemiang, you should be getting goals. And yet, they, they've they've not. They've struggled with it. And do you blame the midfield? But your midfield is De Bruyne. Maybe Kieta, the problem here. Maybe 
if you had a Pogba there or Fernandez with the Bruyne, United could have won the title, but they didn't. I mean, I am intrigued. Have they been struggling all season or United? They were top for one game and then they kind of bounced around third, fourth, the Champions League spots. And then something's gone very wrong here in dispatch. I mean, just having a look. Draw with Brighton, draw with Villa, draw with Watford, draw with Chelsea, lost to Norwich, drew with Wolves, drew with Everton, drew with Burnley, lost, beat Tottenham and lost to West Ham. I mean, you can they'll probably explain where things went very wrong. I mean, looking at this, yeah. From March onwards, United played 11 games, they won one, they lost three and they drew seven. I mean, even if you say they turn five of those draws into wins and they get ten more points, then they finish second place, six points off Newcastle. A lot high, a lot closer to where you'd expect them to be, and yet, there they are. Uh, having a look at the players, that's a bit more. Mark Albrighton, 14 assists. I don't know where that came from. I mean, Everton relegated one point off Leeds. But Mark Albrighton absolutely smashed it with that 14 assists. He got six goals as well. Everton... Just looking at them, managed by Mikel Arteta, best 11. All Brighton playing balls into Raul Jimenez. Uh, I mean, Everton's scored quite a few goals here. All Brighton's got 9, 12 for Delhi, 12 for Rath Redmond, 15 for Jimenez. I guess the problem is, other than those four, it's not many goals. Smith Rowe got 6, 5 for Ducore, but still, it's not, it's not the most. I mean, Everton in the league scored 53 goals. They scored more goals than United. They wanted the top scorers in the league and they still got relegated. Uh, other interesting things in this table. Chelsea, City and Tottenham. 13, 14 and 15 respectively. One point separating the teams. It's a lovely little top four as well. Newcastle, Brighton, Wolves and West Ham. Brentford outside of it on goal difference. And I mean looking at the European spots as well. Brentford in the Europa League. United in the Europa League. So I'll assume... They won the FA Cup or something. Uh, competitions. All competitions, please. Yep. And, yeah, they beat Bournemouth 2-0 in the final. So they got some silverware, at least, out of Bielsa. Uh, Man City, Europa Conference 2. So I assume they won their annual Carabao Cup. Uh, yep. Beat Liverpool 2-1. Ivan Tony with two penalties to do so. Very, very impressive. Uh, whilst Tottenham are in the Europa League. So I assume they won the Conference League. Probably as expected. Yep, 2-1 win against Trabzon Sport in the final. Coming from behind to win that one. So Tottenham finishing 15th, but will be in the Europa League next season. It is interesting. I mean, another thing I wanted to check was Aston Villa. They had Ronaldo, of course, under Graham Potter. I mean, Aston Villa, let's have a look overall. Best 11. I mean, <laughs> a 5 2 2 1. It's very defensive when you have Ronaldo, isn't it? I mean, Romero, Gabriel, Bailly, Target, Walker, Onyeka, and he's, he's been playing Sun as a centre mid. That seems like a waste of Sun. He's not even good at centre mid. Or is this him, just them fitting him in? Ben Rama, Greenwood, Ronaldo. Ronaldo in the league, only getting 14 goals. Sun getting 13. I mean, tactically, at the end of the season, at least, they were saying up a son as a striker and Ronaldo in cam, which does make a lot more sense. Uh, but still, Aston Villa, maybe not getting the best out of Ronaldo here, especially if you're playing him in cam quite often, which they may have ended up doing to accommodate Son. But still, finishing sick, very high up, only four points off the Champions League spots. Pretty decent season for them. Just have a look at the title race overall. Get rid of me in the eye. They clearly won't in it. So highlighting the top four. West Ham and Wolves not in it. This title race from pretty much from the third game of the season has been between Newcastle and Brighton. Newcastle dominating the majority. But Brighton having stretches where they overtook them. Where they had that top spot. But for the last, what, six games or so. Newcastle top of the table. And ending up winning the league. Sean Dyche and Pep Guardiola are going head-to-head. -head, two incredible managers. And as expected, it's Sean Dyche who came out on top. I mean, just looking at the man's schedule. The final stretch of the season, when it mattered. Seven games, five wins, two draws. They drew with Brighton. 
I mean, that could have been the title decider for all I know. But Newcastle going down to 10 men, Brighton taking the lead, but Newcastle equalising and holding on for a draw. And, I mean, in the end, 10 points clear of Brighton. Winning the league, very, very impressive. Everton, Watford and Palace relegated. Palace relegated bottom, 14 points off safety. Jurgen Klopp not having fun, even with his main man, Jordan Henderson, as captain. Looking at the best 11, McCarthy, Dallas, Varan, Lascelles, Digne and Dembele, Rashika, Henderson, Smallbone, Richarlison, Martinelli. It really isn't the best team in his defence. It's not the strongest. You can maybe see why they were relegated. I mean, they were predicted to finish 16th. So, you know, dare or thereabouts. Southampton were predicted to finish 20th. And in the end, they finished 11th. So they've done pretty good under Eddie Howe. Best 11-wise, I mean, Werner on 22 goals, Pookie on 18 goals. I think I can see <laughs> they ended up in safety. Uh, I'll just start at Arsenal, get their squads up, and I'll go by average rating. And I'll just scroll down, and if you want to have a look at any, how sp any specific squads or players did, then feel free to. I mean, <laughs> Mason Greenwood not having the best season. Only three goals and three assists for him. Brentford finished fifth just outside the UCL places. Reese James only getting five assists. I mean, he's a assist machine for me, so I don't know what's gone wrong there. Brian in second, of course, very strong squad. Sterling and Hudson Odoi specifically doing very well this season. Uh, Burnley, Romelu Lukaku, second top scorer in the league on 20 goals, carrying them to 12th place. Whilst Chelsea finishing 13th, not the best season. Vardy got 14 goals, though. Leon Bailey got 12 goals. Uh, Crystal Palace, we just had a look at, really not done well. Everton also relegated. I mean, they were predicted to come 19th and they finished 18th, only like one point off safety. So better than expected for them at least. Whilst Leeds, uh, they had Cavani and Kai Havertz to thank, it seems, largely for their safety. Finishing 17th, one point clear. Uh, Leicester finishing 16th, also down there. I mean... Johan Visa getting the most goals on 11. I mean, good for him. I think <laughs> they got him firing at least. Liverpool finished 10th in the table. Trent Alexander-Arnold, their best player. I mean, even in this randomised Premier League simulation, some things never change. Bamford, third top scorer in the league on 16, 19 goals. Watkins, one of the top scorers as well on 16. Man City won the Carabao Cup, of course, in the league, though. Rodri, one of their best players, much like real life, I guess. Uh, whilst Ivan Tony, top scorer for them with 14 goals. Man United, I mean, Salah, De Bruyne, Kane and Aubameyang, the best players. I mean, that's not too shocking, isn't it? Uh, but seventh place, very disappointing. Your champions, Newcastle, we looked at their squad. They were incredible this season. All those green average ratings, their first team playing beautifully. Whilst Norwich finished ninth, top half for Norwich, very good. Riyad Mahrez, four goals and eight assists, their best average rating. Well done to him. Uh, their top scorer was Martin Odgaard on 11 goals. I mean, who's the striker in... Adam, oh, God. Who's, their stri who's the striker in this team? I mean... Yeah, there's not many, is there? And yet, finishing ninth, largely to thank for Martin Odgaard. Their midfield really contributing to this. Odgaard and Mahrez, especially. Grealish in there as well, and Pulisic. Uh, while Southampton finished 11th, Pookie and Werner, their strikers with 16 and 15 goals respectively. Oriol Romeo with 11 assists, Bernardo, more than Bernardo Silva on 8. Silva their best player on average weight rating though. Uh, Tottenham finishing 15th, winning the Europa Conference League. Lacazette getting 14 goals. Lacazette firing for his real club Arsenal's North London rivals. Whilst Andrew Robertson was their best player average rating wise. Watford relegated. I mean... Only Mane, Van Dijk and Ings getting green average ratings. Mane, their best player. 10 goals and 5 assists for him. Ings getting 17 goals and 5 assists. But not enough for Watford to stay up. West Ham. I mean, quite a few high performers for them. They finished fourth. They finished level on points with third and fifth as well. They got that Champions League spot for next season, however. 14 goals for Pat Sandaka. 13 for Gabriel Jesus. A nice little strike force for them. Helping them into the top four. Best player... Alan St. Maxime, John Stones, Isa Diop, Costas Tissimikos as well. And finally, Wolves, who finished third just above West Ham on goal difference. Good season for them. Top scorer, Anthony Martial. 
Bukoya Saka doing very well as well. Their best player, nine goals, five assists. Four goals and four assists for Maitland Niles at right back. I mean, it is, it is very interesting to look at all of this. Newcastle, you can tell they're managed by Sean Dyche because if you look at yellow cards, they have two players joint second most yellow cards on Tellers and Pogba, but they still won the title, so I don't think they mind. We've seen the Carabao Cup and FA Cup winners, and we've seen the Conference League winners, but I'm tr interested to find out the other European winners. Uh, let's have a look at the Champions League. The final is Bayern versus Real Madrid. So no English teams in the final. They've all been knocked out already. De Bruyne got five assists, so doing very well for United. Let's just have a look. Tree it up. No English teams in the semis because they all went out in the quarters. Back to round. Uh, United losing 3-2 on aggregate to Bayern. City losing 4-1 on aggregate to Barcelona. And Chelsea losing 3-2 on aggregate to Real Madrid. Tough ties for the English sides as they dip out. And Liverpool were eliminated even earlier than that. They went out in the group stage, I guess. Yep, they went out by one point. Zenit and Lille finishing above them. They finished third and they dropped into the Europa League. So let's go down to the Europa League. The final is Atletico Madrid by Leverkusen. No English teams once again. The semi-finals, no English teams. The quarter-finals, an English team. Leicester City and not Liverpool though. Leicester City had a 2-0 lead after the first leg. But they lost 3-0 in the second leg and Bayer Leverkusen advanced. And like Bayer Leverkusen may win the whole damn thing. Uh, looking at the second knockout round, where there's Liverpool. Liverpool losing to Lazio 3-1 up in after the first leg. Losing 3-0 in the second and going out 4-3. The English team's blowing these leads in the Europa League. Uh, whilst West Ham had a 2-0 lead after the first leg and lost 4-1 in the second leg to get eliminated. These English teams cannot hold a lead in this tournament, can they? Uh, but no European success for the English sides. Chris Wood, the top scorer, though. It uh, looks like he finished that way unless Shao Felix gets a couple. That is it for this randomised Premier League experiment. Newcastle United finishing on top. Pep Guardiola proving his managerial nails as well, even more. Taking a almost relegation-predicted Brighton to second place, 10 points off Newcastle. And, I mean, the big thing for me, really, is Man United. Predicted to win the title at the start of the season. Very strong squad, especially that front three of Kane, Salah, and Aubameyang. De Bruyne as well in there. But they finished seventh, 16th place off Newcastle, because they just couldn't end up scoring in the end. 50 goals, not good enough. I mean, defensively as well, I want to say, no one particularly good. Newcastle, the best defence in the league, with 35 goals conceded. Most clean sheets goes to Wolves and Newcastle. Newcastle, 35 conceded, but 15 clean sheets. Allison for Wolves had 15 clean sheets as well, and Wolves conceded 38. So they both did all right league-wise, the best defences, but still, defensively, these teams would have to improve. Uh, but that is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this randomised Premier League experiment. If you want me to simulate a few more seasons forward, see how Everton, Watford and Crystal Palace do in the championship and also have a look at how Bournemouth, Fulham and either Sheffield United or Birmingham fare in this randomised Premier League landscape. Then let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel for more and thank you for watching.